So if we cut the tra uh, spinal cord transversely, then we would see the structure which is written as transverse section of spinal cord. It has two fissures or depressions. So let us draw this section. And as it is visible to us, this side is the dorsal side or sorry, dorsal side and this is the ventral side. And as we can see, the depressions or the fissures, the one which is on the dorsal side is not that deep whereas the one which is on the ventral side is deeper. Dorsal side is also termed as the posterior side and this is also termed as the anterior side. So this is anterior and this is the posterior side. And these depressions, they are known as dorsal and ventral fissures. So let us make this line solid now. The dorsal one is not deep. So this depression is known as the dorsal fissure. And this one is known as the ventral fissure. In the center, there is a canal or cavity. And this is known as the central canal central canal. The central canal is lined with, it is lined with ciliated columnar cells and these ciliated columnar cells are known as ependema cells. So this is basically found in the lining. Now, if we draw this canal a little bigger, so it is lined with this little taller cells, the columnar cells, and the cells, they have cilia at their upper end. So, tall cells and ciliated. So, this is how it is going to appear. All cells are tall, columnar. From the free surface, they have these cilia. So, here, we are simply drawing these cells, that is the ependema, the detailed structure we have drawn separately. So central canal and lined with ependema, that is the membrane which lines central canal. Now, as we said, in spinal cord, the inner part is gray matter and outer part is white matter. Gray matter, in case of spinal cord, is arranged in the shape of alphabet H or it is also known as butterfly shape. So the butterfly shape or alphabet H shape extends like this in the white matter. And now we will label all the parts. So because of this shape, what is visible? First let us label this. This is the gray matter. The inner one is gray in case of spinal cord and the outer one is white matter. Now because of the shape what has happened is there are two extensions which are on the dorsal side and two extensions on the ventral side. These extensions are known as columns or horns. So the ones which are on dorsal side, they are called dorsal horns. So this is one dorsal horn, this is another one. And two which are extended on the ventral side would form the ventral horn. Because of this, the white matter, outer white matter has been divided into distinct zones. This zone is the dorsal zone, this is the ventral zone and these are the lateral zones. So this white matter which is here on the lateral side is known as 
lateral funiculus lateral funiculus this is white matter which has been divided into different zones due to this gray matter which is in the middle the one which is at the dorsal side is known as the posterior funiculus or dorsal funiculus so this is dorsal funiculus and this one would be the ventral funiculus so this is ventral as it is on ventral side funiculus now because of this arrangement as we have seen the parts now we will talk about the gray matter these are two horns on the dorsal side we call them dorsal horn the two extensions on the ventral side ventral horn but there are two bands of gray matter on either side of this canal central canal so we are talking about this band of gray matter and this band that means this region and this region they are known as commissures on the basis of their side we will call them this would be called dorsal gray commissure or simple dorsal commissure and this region would be called the ventral commissure or ventral gray commissure so this is just the term given to various regions from the dorsal fissure extends a thin membrane of connective tissue so there is a thin membrane connective tissue going up to the central canal this membrane is known as dorsal septum which is going from the fissure terminal end to the inner part now as we have said that outer is white matter inner is gray matter gray matter is in the form of h alphabet and as it is visible here what is there in gray matter are neurons mainly the cell bodies and white matter uh, has only the myelinated nerve fibers the dorsal horn mainly has sensory fibers and the ventral horn mainly has the motor fibers and normally in the middle region are the bipolar neurons we will draw those neurons and label them when we come to reflex action so this is the section of spinal cord and after we take a section we realize that here it is reversed if you remember we said from pons pons medulla and then spinal cord these are the regions where the gray matter is inner and white matter is outer whereas in forebrain midbrain part including the cerebellum part of hindbrain it is gray matter which is outside and white matter which is inside now function of the spinal cord the function which it performs is reflex action we will talk about the path that is reflex arc and we'll draw it later when we come to peripheral nervous system so with this we have completed the central nervous system in central nervous system there are two parts brain and spinal cord so we have understood all parts of brain and spinal cord also in the next segment we'll start with peripheral nervous system that is about the nerves